Let's take a moment to take a look at moments. So an introduction to moments and calculating basically rotations, okay? A moment force. So what does a moment tell us? A moment tell us, tells us how an object is essentially rotating about a given point, okay? So you can think of it like this. You have a piece of paper. You guys can use a piece of paper maybe in front of you. Put your finger in the middle of the paper, okay? Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your finger on the paper and with your fin other finger, you're gonna push along this arrow. And what's gonna happen is the paper's gonna spin this way. Yeah, it's gonna spin that way. Another thing you could do, you would need someone else to help you, is you can get someone else to put their finger and push this way a little bit less. So you have your hand here, you're pushing this way, somebody else is pushing this way. Which way is it gonna rotate? And that's what we're gonna do today. Okay, we're gonna calculate the moment force, whether it's clockwise or anti-clockwise, and just see which one's bigger, okay? So how do we calculate that? It's very, very simple. The moment force is simply force times perpendicular distance, all right? Force times perpendicular distance. And it allows us to make calculations that easily show, for example, if we have like a, a nail and we have like a, what is it, a spanner. If you want to twist the nail, would you rather have a really tiny spanner or would you rather have a really long spanner? Well, the answer you should tell me is the long spanner because we know that if this distance is longer, it's much easier to push down, or is it righty-tighty, loosey-lefty-goosey, something like that. But if you wanna tighten it, you wanna righty-tighty push down, it's much easier to do that if you have a longer spanner, right? So it is distance times force of action, that would be a clockwise rotation. All right, I don't wanna see students resolving forces with these, it doesn't make any sense. Force does not have a distance, so resolving a force like this makes no sense. So if we look at part A, yeah, we need to make sure we see the perpendicular distance from where we are taking moments from. So imagine I have a sheet of paper here, and I'm putting my finger on P, and I'm pushing the paper this way. The paper is going to spin this way around, okay, so we're following this traje trajectory and that distance there is maintaining the whole time okay so the moment here we're going to say for each force whether it's clockwise or anti-clockwise now this one is clearly a clockwise moment okay so this is only going to be a clockwise moment so um, our moment about p is going to be the force which is eight multiplied by its shortest distance between p and the line now the shortest distance can only ever be perpendicular. Now here I've given you a perpendicular distance, yeah, because between the line and this is perpendicular. So that three is literally the shortest distance. Eight times three is 24 Newton meters. Forces in Newtons length in meters, me meters, clockwise. How about this one? Remember, take in moments about P we're gonna say P, force. We're pushing the paper this way. That's gonna rotate that way around. This is an anti-clockwise moment, an ACW. So my uh, moment at P is gonna be my force multiplied by the shortest distance, okay? Now, I've not even put a distance here by mistake. Let's just make one up. I'm gonna put 10 meters, okay? Students will say 5.2 times 10, but that's not the shortest distance from P. If I give you guys another scenario where it's horizontal and I have P, there's all these kind of distances. And I say, okay, which one's the shortest distance though? The shortest distance is the one that's perpendicular. Over here, I have all of these distances, yeah, between P and the force. I want the one that is the shortest. The shortest one 
is the one that's going to be perpendicular to this. So if I do a kind of perpendicular, we can see it's here. So it's this distance that we need. Let me just use some simple trig. 10 is in the hypotenuse. This is the ops. So we're using sine. So this is going to be 10, the hypotenuse, sine 20. And that's our shortest distance, 10 sine 20, which is about 5.2 times 10 sine 20. I'm not in radians, I mean, not in degrees. Now I am. 17.8, so about 17.8 Newton meters ACW. Now, what happens when I have this kind of spider-like diagram where I have more forces acting on our piece of paper? Yeah, We have us who are putting our finger on P. We have someone who's pushing this way, someone's pushing up, someone's pushing down this way. Which way is it going to move? All right. All we do is we go force by force and we decide, is it a clockwise or anti-clockwise moment? So get our pen. Yeah, mechanics is a practical subject, guys. So be practical about this. You put your force or your pen along the dotted line and then two Newtons is pushing up. That is a clockwise moment. So this is gonna be clockwise. How about the 10 Newtons follow here? The 10 Newtons is gonna push the tip to the left. So that is an anti-clockwise, so an ACW. How about this one? We go along, then we just follow the line with our pen. That is going to be a clockwise. So we have two clockwise moments and one anti-clockwise. Let's do the clockwise moment first. Let's do the clockwise. So the two Newtons force multiplied by perpendicular distance. But it's already perpendicular, so it's just two. And we now have this seven Newtons, seven times. Now remember, we need the shortest distance. We need the perpendicular distance. So you're saying P along this line, which one is gonna be the shortest distance? The shortest distance is the one that is perpendicular to this line. So about here, all right? And you just need to tell me what this distance is. Well, the hypotenuse is three, and you want the opposite, right? So it's gonna be three sine 10. And we just work that out. So we have two times two plus seven times three sine 10. So about 7.6466 dot, 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 dot. I'm going to store that as A for later use. Now let's look at the moment about P anti-clockwise. So the force anti-clockwise is 10 times. Now we need the shortest distance. Okay, The shortest distance is the one that is going to be perpendicular to this line. That goes through P, so something like that. All right, same thing. We have five in the uh, hypotenuse, and we want the opposite. So it's five sine 50. So five, it's not always going to be sine. Yeah, it's just the ones I chose happen to be like that. Five sine 50, which is about 10 times five sine 50, 38.3. Oh, dot, dot, dot. That is clearly the biggest uh, moment. So it means regardless of the fact that there's two forces trying to rotate the piece of paper this way, this being such a far distance away, it just overtakes everything. I mean, you can say two plus seven is nine, which is less than this, but you know, if I move this way further, this force would have been much, much bigger, okay? And also it's acting at 10 degrees is quite small. Okay, so storing that as B, we're gonna do alpha B minus alpha A. So my net moment is gonna be this minus this, which is 30.7 Newton meters anti-clockwise. And it's really that simple. So I'm gonna make more mechanics videos for you guys, but really 
To be good at mechanics means being good at doing soccer toa. And that's really it, guys. That's basically the whole of physics. Let's be real. <laughs> but guys, if you learned something today, I'd really appreciate if, you, appreciate if you hit the like button and subscribe for more maths content. And if you're interested in my A-level maths courses, link is in the description. Then feel free to join the Lung Gang community on Reddit if you want to submit your own questions and get feedback. I'll see you in the next video. Nice.